Nafisa Collier is here, and we have a lot to talk about. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Magdal, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. We cover the women's game six days a week. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And of course, it is brought to you not just by me, but by the entire team over at thenexthoops.com. The Next Hoops, where we have over 100 women's basketball pieces reported every month. Um, our own Terry Horseman is actually going to talk to uh, Nafisa Collier, our guest, tomorrow for a written piece as well. But, uh, Fee, I just feel like you touch on all the areas of women's basketball that we cover. So I'm delighted to have the chance to chat with you about all of it today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. The place I want to start is, and this is this is most important, we need a Mila update, right? So, mm-hmm. like, What's she doing? What's her latest? You know, tell tell us tell us what we need to know about the world of Mila. Yeah, she just turned eight months, and so time is flying by. She is crawling a bunch. She's walking on her like little push walker, so that's new. Um, yeah, she's just so much fun. It's it's a really cool stage that she's in right now. Is there anything she's done where you're like, wow, I didn't know a baby does it that soon? Like anything that's like a big surprise? Yeah. Um, like physically, she's done everything really early. She started crawling before like the, you know, um, they have like the milestones or whatever. She started crawling before that. She started like walking on her walker before that. She's like clapping, which is early. Um, so not to brag, but she's advanced. I love it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Does she have any sort of like athletic prowess in her background from mom or dad? Maybe that plays a part in it. I don't know. Could just- be. We both, um, her dad walked early too. He walked at nine months. So she's got... You know, she's got to get there in a month if she wants to beat him. Nice. Nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, that all sounds wonderful. Um, I did want to talk about uh, your alma mater a little bit, if we could. And we had, uh, I don't know if you know him, Gina Wariema. He was on the podcast yesterday, if you're familiar at all. But uh, you know, once you know, or twice. Once or twice. I mean, you know, he was talking about it. You know, just, you know, the fact that, I, and and the height of the absurdity is like, Jonathan the Husky's on the injured list right now. Like everyone, everyone and everything. Have you ever seen anything like it? And then just sort of the flip side is like, how does a team like that overcome it to go 18 and two and be right there in the national title conversation? Sometimes you just have years where it feels like everyone's hurt. I think all programs go through that. They're definitely in a down year this year. It really stinks, you know, for the team, for the girls. It's definitely nothing that you ever want to see. So I definitely feel for them in that regard. Um, Jonathan too, like you said, it's just something's going around, you know, it's just the bad luck bug right now, but yeah, I have no doubt that they're going to persevere and work with what they've got. And it just means that other people on the team are going to have an opportunity to step up that they might not have gotten otherwise. So, uh, of course it's, you never want to see people hurt, but it also gives other, other players an opportunity to step up. No doubt about it. And, you know, to have CD, as you know, Chris Daly, for our listeners, I assume everybody knows, but to be able to come in and coach uh, as, you know, a backup option and and somebody with her gravitas, I assume, you know, it allows the program not to miss a beat, even when, you know, Gino has to miss one game or another. Yeah, they work so closely together and CD is really like another head coach. Uh, yeah. So it really is, you know, she steps in there really flawlessly and I'm sure You'll, she'll tell you she has a perfect record when she's head coaching. Uh, so uh, that held up again this year. It, it, it certainly has. And so, uh, you know, coming into a game like tonight uh, against Tennessee, you know, it seems to have obviously extra juice. We're obviously delighted to see, you know, ESPN game day going over there for it. Um, at this point, is Tennessee, though, the same level of rival in your mind as a UConn alum or is South Carolina, you know, quote unquote enemy number one? Like, how do you view that in terms of rivalry games? 
Um, I think mine will always be Notre Dame in my head. That was our big rival when I was there. So for me, it's that game always. Sure. I think South Carolina is definitely um, rising in the ranks in that regard because it was always really tough uh, when we played them when I was there. And, I, you know, they are still an amazing program. So those games are always fun to watch. Tennessee, I think – you know, their rivalry out of habit just because it's been such a long standing thing. But I didn't even play Tennessee when I was there, actually. Yeah. So, in my mind, I think it's different from whatever generation you're from. It is fascinating to see. And of course, the fact that there are these different generations just speaks to what UConn has been. I, I definitely was a little self conscious. Our opening is our generic opening, but it has Enrique making a shot in the yeah. opening. So, no, I know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's I heard that. it. Don't worry. <laughs> but it is true. Like they have, UConn has not missed a Final Four since 2007. Uh, and I talked about this on the on the program yesterday. My about to be a teenage daughter was minus three years old when that happened. Like, where were you in 2007? 2007, I was uh, 10 or 11. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just an incredible streak. It really is yeah. a remarkable thing to see. Um, I I, I want to transition though to you and your game. And Cheryl Reeve had a really interesting comment that I saw uh, Kent Youngblood had in the Minneapolis Star Tribune. And she said, I want her to be able to play in her natural state. That can mean so many different things. For somebody with a broad base of skills like you bring to the table, I wonder what that means to you. Uh, in my natural state, uh, I would probably say that means a lot of post work. That's like where I feel my natural state is. And then everything else is something I'm trying to work on where I'm trying to expand my game. You know, the three point uh, shot, taking people off the dribble, things like that are things that I feel like I've improved upon and I want to continue to improve upon. But my natural habitat, I feel like is under the basket. So she's probably referencing, you know, putting me down there a little bit, but also being able to work on the wing, too. It was interesting. You know, it's a small sample, the four games after your return. But when you were doing that, you were able to get to the basket. In fact, your the amount of time you were shooting from zero to three feet out was higher and small sample than it was even before your pregnancy. I, did it feel to you like that was something that kind of came back the quickest? Um, yeah, I think it's I think it was probably on purpose because yeah, um, coming back that soon after I didn't have a lot of time to work on my game at all or to like work on my body to get that explosiveness back to get any kind of speed back so that was kind of my safe space being so close to the basket interesting and and, and of course it has not been though uh, even the predominant place where you've been here in the pros your first two years in the pros you shot 36 percent and then north of 40 percent from three. I guess I wonder, you know, you talked about getting better from three. I know Cheryl's spoken about that as well. What's reasonable to expect? What do you have as sort of a goal for it? I mean, 40% from three for somebody who does all the things you do would be elite. It's, you know, it's all WNBA level. Yeah, I think so keeping that percentage there, but um, increasing the frequency mm -hmm. is what we're talking about. And especially um, more than just like uh, static, just standing there and shooting being able to come off screens or doing it in motion, things like that, just being more comfortable other than just like spot shooting. So what does that work look like for you day to day right now? How are you, you know, when, when you're putting that time in the gym, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm putting myself in game like situations. So it's usually like with a chair, you pretend it's a defender or your player setting a screen for you and you're coming off from different positions, you know, like from the corner up to the wing or from the baseline, like I'm getting a down screen or a pin down uh, coming up to the three, just putting yourself in different game like situations that I know work within the plays that we already have and um, really kind of putting myself in like the two spot as opposed to setting the down screen. You're doing all that, obviously, on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you feel it coming back? Do you feel like it's a, ahead mm -hmm. of where you thought it would be? I mean, it, it's obviously hard because you've never gone through this before to know, you, you know, where are you on sort of that arc of return that you had in your mind? Yeah, I feel really good. It feels just great to be able to do the things that I know that I used to be able to. Um, right after I had Mila and I came back to the season, it was, you know, I definitely gave myself grace because I understood my body went through a lot, but it's always frustrating when you're not doing the things that you know that you were once able to do. So mm -hmm. being able to have full workouts and, you know, play hard and actually work on getting better 
which I haven't been able to do in a long time because before that I was in France, then it was COVID. Um, so it's been quite a few years since I've had like an off season to actually work on my game for an extended uh, amount of time. And I'm eager to talk about that within the larger framework of your decisions and the way in which you're charting a very different path and a path really that is brand new. And so we're going to get to that in segment two about the ways in which you are trailblazing in the world around basketball as well. Uh, first, I do want to talk to our audience about FanDuel. And uh, it's worth noting that FanDuel is the new sports betting partner for Locked On. They're the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Uh, new customers join today and you get $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Uh, you can even combine your bets for a bigger payout. Now, uh, I don't bet myself, but I am aware of the fact that FanDuel has partnered with the WNBA in the past, that there are women's sports options there as well. And true equality means true equality in all areas of sports life. So, so this all takes place on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So, Fee, even beyond just the question of on the court and what we've been talking about, you are on a marketing agreement. You have made decisions not to play overseas. You're charting a very different course. And I kind of want to unpack a couple of them and get a sense of how you arrived at it and how it's going, quite frankly, so far. So, you know, even just the the W marketing deal in and of itself. Like, What's been your favorite part of that? What's been kind of the biggest challenge? Because you are in a lot of ways part of a, a brand new force doing it. This is an expansion from three to 10. This is something that is still in its infancy in a lot of ways. Yes. So my favorite part, I just got back from um, overseas. I was in Paris for the NBA game. Uh, so that was really, really fun. I think that was probably my favorite <clears throat> activation with them so far mm -hmm. uh, that's been great um my least favorite i really don't think i have a least favorite it's been such a cool experience and uh being on the marketing agreement last year to this year it's really cool to see how things have changed and evolved and already like gotten so much better and i thought it was great last year so uh, i think that they've done a phenomenal job and i'm really excited to see how many people we have next year and the year after and hopefully we can keep bringing more and more people on so that they um it's a decision if they want to go overseas instead of you know a, a forced thing that you have to do because you have to make money right and and you were on the podcast back in december talked to the great jackie powell about how in a lot of ways you've been that ambassador you know as somebody who did it from year one to year two being a sounding board for other players who are doing this as well have you had a moment between all of this and working on your game and being a new mom to take a time and say, wow, what I'm doing right now is really building a bridge to how professional basketball can be played in this country? Um, I don't think I've ever thought about it in that sense where like I'm a trailblazer or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I think as of, as anyone, I'm just doing the best that I can with what my situation is and making the best decisions that I can for me and my family. And that this is what it's looked like. And I've really, really enjoyed it. And I hope to continue to work with the league to continue to do marketing. Cause um, I think it's been mutually beneficial. It's been beneficial for me. I hope I've been, you know, beneficial for the league. Yeah. So it's, I've really enjoyed it and I hope to continue to, I haven't really thought about it in the sense that other people are looking to see, wow. um, you know, how I'm doing. As, as a point of personal privilege from the host, more Nafisa Collier means better things for the WNBA. So I think that is, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that is uh, uh, undisputed, but the flip yeah. side of that, of course, is a decision not to play overseas anymore. And, you know, we can talk about it from a lot of different ways, from a physical way, the fact that you're able to work on your game in a targeted way. I mean, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with players through the years where I've said, are you looking to work on this? And you say, yes, but instead I'm going to go and, you know, sit in a locked hotel room and play a game once a night because that's what I'm doing instead. And so like, 
is the benefit bigger physically for you? Is a bigger benefit, you know, emotionally and knowing you're able to stay home and you're able to be around family? Just kind of take me through kind of the way in which all of that process has worked for you. For me, yes. And I think it's a really personal decision for everyone. For me, I really, really value being around my family. So even if I didn't have Mila, which is a huge reason why I've stayed now, um, I love being with my family, especially around the holidays. I've always been really close with them. And I, I do like that targeted, um, like being able to work on something. I like that a lot. That's worked for me in the past. But I mean, there is drawbacks as well, because there's nothing like being in a game situation to help you grow your game. So I'm not getting that. So I have three on three, but you know, it's not the same as being in. So, you know, there's benefits and drawbacks for me. The good definitely outweighed the bad with being here. So, like I said, I think it's a personal decision for everyone. Um, and this is what's worked well for me. And in conjunction with that, of course, you get to kind of sit back and relax a little bit when it comes to the free agent frenzy that we are in the midst of, which um, I, I will just tell you, I have not been able to sit back and relax. That's definitely been the opposite for me as I've had to report. Um, but I just wonder, it kind of gives you a bit of being able to view it from 30,000 feet and even just to like start out from there. How meaningful is it? You know, and obviously being married to Alex, you know the NBA world so well too, right? Like to be able to see the WNBA offseason start to mirror the coverage, the attention that have, we have routinely seen for generations on the NBA side. It's really fun. Um, I have to say I am uh, happy that I am safe under contract, <laughs> like with the Minnesota Lynx. Uh, it's it's almost like a drama. You know, you never know what's going to come out from day to day, like who's been traded where for what people, for what picks. It's just really, really exciting. It feels like something new comes out every day with um, you know, that stuff with the Erica now, it's just like something is happening every day in free agency. Um, so it's really interesting to see. And I think we're going to see a lot of big moves this year. We've already seen, um, you know, JJ to New York, who thought that was going to happen at the end of last season. And I didn't, I didn't hear any stirrings of that. So I think they're going to see a lot more. We hope to stir the pot. We hope to be in the news for good things coming mm -hmm. soon. Um, and it's going to be really exciting to see where everyone ends up by the time the season starts. What is that like for you as a player? You know, I've heard different players approach it different ways when it comes to free agency. Sometimes you want to be real active and saying, you know, look, I really want to come to my team, you know, come to our team. You know, other times it's a more a question of like, no, we're going to have this conversation. We're going to talk more generally. We're going to, you know, give somebody the space to do it. How do you navigate it? Is it just individualized for you when you think about it? Or are you sort of part of that? active recruiting uh, when it comes to bringing people to the Minnesota Lakes? I am pretty involved with recruiting for our team, but I think it's also individualized because some people don't like to be hounded, you know, obviously <laughs> like talk to you. Okay. You can give me your pitch and then let me think about it. Some people like you want to talk to them a little bit more, make sure you stay fresh on their mind. So it, it kind of is knowing their personality as well. Um, so it's been, that's been kind of cool too, just seeing how that whole process works and seeing how you have to, it's like coaching, you have to coach everyone a little bit different based on their personalities. It's, that's how it's been in free agency. Being able to recruit, being able to do that. Does that make you want to be someday a college coach? Does it have you with designs on being a general manager? I mean, has, has it taken your mind in those directions? Yeah, it's definitely showed me how hard it is. It's really, really hard, the work that they do. And we definitely take it for granted because we don't know what goes on behind the scenes, how much work is put into it and how much effort, attention to detail, um, just the hours and hours spent on recruiting and, you know, trying to convince someone to come here and prove to them that this is a spot for them. It's not an easy job. So it's made me look at and appreciate our team in a whole new way. Um, but I don't know if it's the path that I want to follow. Well, it you, you have plenty of time in the meantime, because the Minnesota Lynx are, by Cheryl's own uh, statements, building around you. And so I guess to kind of bring that full circle, you know, I've covered you for a long time. I've covered you dating back to a time at UConn that, quite frankly, I thought there was a massive gap between the player you were and the appreciation there was, generally speaking, for what you were able to bring to the floor. And, and Gino has, of course, always been an advocate about that. We're seeing it, I think, close up little by little. But to be at this point now, do you feel as if 
there is an understanding at this point of where you are as a player, or do you still think there's more to go? Or are you still playing with a chip on your shoulder from that? I just wonder kind of what the view is from your perspective. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a chip on my shoulder in that regard. Uh, I know what I can do. And so it's always been like a fight within myself. Like I need to prove to myself that I can reach the potential that in the bar that I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. It's not so much like, oh, I don't think I'm getting enough attention or this or that. I've never thought of it that way. Um, as long as my team appreciates me, which I've always felt no matter where I am, my team does. Uh, that's all that matters to me. What I'm doing on the floor, what I'm doing with my team, for my teammates, for my coaches, um, that's the most important thing to me. I have never heard a teammate or a coach have anything negative. To say. <laughs> so clearly that is succeeding. Uh, I, I do want to let our listeners know, we thank you for making Lockdown Women's Basketball your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Game to Game NBA, every moment across the league, every performance, every result. Lockdown uh, Game to Game NBA covers every game with local analysis that only Lockdown can deliver. Follow Game to Game Locked on NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts. The NBA, a perfectly fine lead to follow during, let's say, a WNBA offseason between WNBA free agency signings, right? I mean, it's, you know, it, it'll get us to the next WNBA season, right, Fee? Yeah, it'll do. That's <laughs> perfect. Well, thank you very much, Fee, for your time. Thank you to our listeners. We'll be back tomorrow with the great Jackie Powell talking to James Kay about the Chicago Sky, very interesting team as well. Until then, I am Howard Megdal wishing you all a wonderful Thursday. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball.